Oh. It definitely feels, strange sound. It definitely feels like the transition into the desert now. It's getting more and more arid, less and less trees. And I've decided, I know I said at the end of the last video, I may do one massive mission directly to the Sahara, but that would have been in reality. I checked eight hours and there's so much stopping because it's all so fascinating. It probably would have taken me about 13 hours. So I'm splitting it into two. Today I'm riding to the, the northern tip, right at the start of the Atlas Mountains in a town called Uzud, or it may just be a tiny little village. I'll stay there for the night and then I've got what will probably be the final ride through the Atlas Mountains and to Uzazate, which is the town that's the gateway to the Sahara. So I think two more days riding and I'll make it to the Sahara. So today is a three hour ride and it's about 150 kilometers. So tomorrow will be the longer of the two days. But everything's cheap here in this bit of Morocco. Hotels seem to be fairly standard, 25 pounds, 20 pounds a night, something like that. I think my one tonight, I've got a, a two bedroom apartment for about 25 pounds. Food prices, yesterday evening, to give you an example, I, and you may wonder why it's such a weirdly large amount to eat, because I didn't eat at lunchtime. I had to basically have two meals worth of food in the evening. I had a pizza, I had uh, lentil soup, I had salad, I had freshly squeezed strawberry juice and water. All of that, eight pounds. Everything's brilliant value. Empty roads, stunning weather. It's amazing, really amazing. You know, waking up and just knowing that you're gonna hit these incredible empty roads. Oh, I love it. Aware of the bonds that were created today When you told me that sure there's a way The water's so still and my pain's gone away The air is much cleaner after it rains Spring air, follow the moment of the sun. There's a call for new beginnings here, but the sorrow of yesterday disappeared. Let your body be new. I'm a wanderer of the soul. Before the end, I plan to behold But I know I'll lose myself along the way What's gone is gone What's past is past Let me leave what belongs in the past Oh, bugger I didn't expect this these are dirt tracks. I've been going along for half an hour on these, but it's so, so bumpy. It's, it's not even a road anymore. And I don't know how much more the Bonneville can take. The tires could burst, the, uh, things could rattle off it. I'm doing eight miles an hour on average now. It's so bad, but I've been going half an hour in this direction. So I don't know if I should carry on and hope a tarmac road begins or try and go back and find another route if offline Google Maps will give me another route. Hmm. This is tricky. I genuinely don't know what to do. I honestly, I don't think the Bonneville will survive 108 kilometers on this road. I think it will die if I carry on too much further. Okay. I'll think for a couple of minutes. Okay. Decision made. I'll have to go back. I have no idea how long it could be in that direction. So a good half an hour back that way and then try and manually find bigger roads in the rough direction of 
Uzud. Here goes. everywhere just swarming around me Google Maps luckily came to my rescue I went back the way I came on the dirt track and Google Maps auto generated without me having to do anything else it auto generated a new road or a new route on proper roads like this which I was delighted by I've just had my first sight right there in the distance. That, all the way along, is the Atlas mountain range. That is all that's stopping me now from the Sahara Desert. I think that's about 80 kilometers away and it's incredible to think that that final obstacle, just behind that, the Sahara Desert awaits. <laughs> That was a real experience, having a late lunch in that little village. I initially pulled up outside a cafe and I asked him if they serve food and he said no, but he pointed me in the, the direction of the little hut at the end of the street. So I walked down to the hut and as I'm walking, every little shop and cafe are shouting at each other that a tourist is in town. So while I'm poorly communicating what I want to the, the little food seller, taking about 10 minutes, people see I'm struggling. So after a while, there are about eight people surrounding myself and this food seller, trying to, to help explain what I want, although their English is as bad as my French. So it was almost completely impossible. So after 10 minutes, we all agreed that no one had any idea what the other were talking about. So they just started cooking me stuff. They showed me the herbs they were using and we just agreed that they would start cooking. And it was very nice, but a real experience. They are such a curious bunch, the Moroccans. Always, always hospitable, always curious, always enthusiastic. Trip update. Well, I vented. Maybe the precursor of a mountain range to the Atlas Mountains, because I've been going for about 15 minutes in this steep ascent. 
And now I can see I'm about to head back down and there's a level plain in the distance there. I think that's where I'm going to be spending the night. And then you can see just in the distance, I think that will be the proper Atlas Mountains. I'm still 45 minutes away though. It's taken way longer than I thought it would. Park the bike up, and before I give you a quick tour, that is the Atlas Mountains all around that you can just see in the distance. So secure parking, this is about 26 pounds for the night. Family run business, this is their house. I was greeted by the son who's got to be about 11 years old or so. Come through here, there are plenty of different rooms. One is the family house or the family room where they live. This is mine, room one. It is, well, it sleeps two people in complete comfort. Two sofas, two beds. I love that traditional style. Look at the patterns on those sofas. Table in the middle. With a TV. And coming through here, bathroom, kind of bathroom slash, where's the shower? Oh, that's the shower. So it's a, a wet room as well. And then I'll be completely honest. I don't think I'll be cooking, but this is the kitchen area with a stove. And finally, oh, second bedroom, which I haven't been in here. Second bedroom, so it actually sleeps four. That's it.
my room for the night. I may even stay two nights here just to recharge before the final big push to the Sahara. Well, that somehow ended up being about a six hour day in the saddle, apart from stopping off a bit for food. It's more and more spectacular the further towards the Sahara you get. It really is some of the most incredible scenery I've ever seen. You don't get any fatigue at all on the bike. I don't think I've ever experienced this before. Because it's so spectacular, you're in awe for every single mile that you're riding. I have never once felt even remotely tired doing this journey so far. I checked on Google Maps without question, either to tomorrow or the day after, depending if I have just one extra day here to explore the town, I will hit the Sahara within one day's riding. I'll probably set off early at about 7 or 8 a.m. and I will definitely do it within a day. So I'm going to head off now into town, go and find somewhere to eat and just unwind. Feels amazing, really. The, the penultimate little step and to be in the Atlas Mountains, or at least at the very start of the Atlas Mountains now, it's getting more and more dramatic and getting higher and higher. It feels incredible. Really, really incredible. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>